name is Sean Peck. I'm the avid elective teacher here at Henry Sibley High School. Today we're going to be looking at a very important component of the worker strategies, the inquiry strategy. Inquiry is important for our students because it allows them to think at different levels. We have a basic kind of gathering information level. So right now, um, just go ahead and read the article and, uh, and we'll read it again through here a second time in just a moment. As we advance our, our critical thinking skills, we would compare pieces of information, compare and contrast different pieces of our content, and then the highest level of thinking that we all kind of aspire to is to get into that analyzing of our content and, and really kind of uh, making judgments or predictions about what may happen in the future. Make sure we're underlining our keywords, we're circling any biased claims by the author, and writing level two and level three questions in the margins. And it's by thinking at that highest level that we can really deepen our students' understanding of the content. A helpful visual that we like to use is that of Costas House. And we talk about the bottom level, the middle level, and the top level of that house. The bottom level is our sort of gathering of information type questions. Questions like, complete or describe or list, identify, define, name, recite or recall. These kind of basic remembering types of questions. Once we have um, kind of mastered that level one kind of thinking question, we then obviously move to level two. This would be um, analyzing information, putting things into categories, asking students to explain their point of view, classifying things, uh, organizing different things or putting things into sequence, taking multiple pieces of information and putting them together to problem solve. The third level of Costas House is where we all aspire to be at. We want to be in the attic of that house asking higher ordered thinking questions such as plan, evaluate, judge, predict, generalize or speculate. Even what if questions are great examples of level three questions questions that really require students to know the content well enough to be able to predict future events. Let's take social studies for instance. A great way that we can use Costas full house is to ask a level one question such as, what is the Fifth Amendment? A level two question would then be, what is the difference between the Fifth and the Sixth Amendment? And a great level three question might be, applying the principles found in the Fifth Amendment, how would you decide the case of Miranda versus Arizona? In English, we could use Costas House in this way. A level one question might be, who is the main character in Great Expectations? A level two question might be, analyze the character's intentions in a particular scene. A level three question might be, imagine you were this character. How would you respond in this situation that came up in the book? And ask students to make a prediction about how they would respond. One way we can do an inquiry is through Costas questions, and they can be done in an interactive notebook. In science, I require my students to write a level one, level two, level three question for every single topic that we do, every single Cornell note we do. Uh, in science, a second way that we do inquiry is the scientific method. So the first step in the scientific method is making an observation. The second part of the scientific method then is to make a prediction based on that observation. What do you think is going to happen? And so in the case of the three-hole bottle experiment, going to remove the tape off of one of the holes and have the students predict what they think is going to occur. Third step of the scientific method then would be to take that prediction and turn it into a hypothesis. In science class we do an if then because. If this happens, tape is removed from the three holes, or one of the three holes, then what's going to happen, their prediction, and why they think that that's going to happen. Fourth step of the scientific process then is to do the experiment. So here's an ordinary uh, two liter bottle and you've seen that I have put some tape over it and inside the tape there are three holes. My prediction is that there will be a small amount of water that squirts me. 
small amount of water just squirted me. The fifth step then is to analyze the data. Now that you've seen what's going to happen, come up with an explanation about why that happened. Once you know why it happened, then it's um, go back and either retest it to make sure and verify that that's what occurred, or take it to a new situation. So maybe second time around, open up two holes and make a new prediction based on the evidence that you've already gathered. Once you've removed one hole, then the next step is to say, hey, what's going to happen when you remove two holes? Once you have two holes open, what's going to happen if you do three holes? I believe I am going to get wet when three holes are visible. Alright, try it. Definitely getting wetter. <laughs> there are a lot of different ways we can implement the inquiry strategy in our classrooms. When the students are taking notes, when they're reading an article, when they're engaged in an activity, maybe a learning reflection. One area where it really works well is during a Socratic seminar. This is an activity that starts with the students reading an article and using that article to have a great classroom discussion. Prior to the class actually getting into that circle to have that discussion, they're encouraged to write questions in their margins, level two, level three questions. What are they wondering when they're reading that article? Then once we circle up and start the discussion, it always starts with a question. Can you explain in more detail the difference between normal lightning and dark lightning? How much information have scientists already gathered? If the conversation ever bogs down or kind of gets stuck or maybe even off track, we always come back to one of the great questions that our students has asked that's already written down in their margins. Could this energy be used in some sort of way to benefit people? That way we make sure that we're staying true to the text of the article, not getting off on tangents and also practicing these great critical thinking skills. Feel free to contribute whenever you have something important to say. Anna, would you like to get us started with a question? Will this okay. radiation harm people? But it does say in the it can be hazardous and most pilots do avoid it at all costs. And it's never really an <laughs> impact on us and we're just learning about it now. Now the inquiry method is a great place for students to start fostering a lot of these critical thinking skills that we want them to have as they graduate from Henry Sibley and go on to college or enter the workforce. It's these kind of problem solving skills that are going to make them successful in whatever they do. And We can start doing it in our classrooms and being motivators for them to be higher ordered thinking students.